Ian, give us the background of Truffle Asset Management. So Truffle is an owner-managed boutique um, business. We've been going for over 10 years. So you know, even though the business might not be uh, that well known, we certainly have over a decade behind us in terms of experience. As a business, we have uh, critical mass. Um, as I said, we've been around for 10 years. We've got eight retail collective investment schemes uh, covering a whole variety of different mandates. And the balance of the business really represented by some fairly sizable segregated uh, institutional mandates. So from a, from a business and a continuity perspective, um, well entrenched, uh, significant critical mass with a significant depth of resource uh, across the business. So some of our strategies typically would cover uh, Regulation 28, typical pension fund um, savings, contractual savings vehicles. We also have uh, various specialist equity mandates um, managed to different benchmarks depending on what client requirements are. We have uh, flexible income mandates and income mandates. We also run a bespoke property unit trust for one of our bigger multi-managers and uh, effectively um, also have some non-reg 28 multi-asset absolute return mandates. That pretty much makes up the broad suite of the Truffle retail products that we offer to our clients. We also manage some alternative asset um, strategies, specifically a, a, a hedge fund strategy. Uh, it's got a track record which is over seven years and very different from your typical long only investment where we can employ different strategies in terms of alpha generation. Um, and from a return perspective, certainly the fund has generated very, very competitive and compelling returns um, over its history. So at Truffle, we also think some of our competitive advantages are very specific to us, especially when we look at the industry in general. And I'll give you a sense of what those advantages are. One of the big advantages is our median level of experience. So our median level of experience in Truffle and for a business that's 10 years old, our median experience is over 20 years. If you look at the, the intellectual capital that we have access to in the business. Now, that might sound like a, a trite comment, but the reality is, is that we have skills in the business that have lived through boom and bust cycles. We have seen many events unfold over the last 30 years in investment markets where a lot of our peers who have a lot younger teams haven't really seen or witnessed a lot of these events taking place. And what's interesting is that things, history tends to repeat itself, cycles tend to repeat themselves over long periods of time. And this can be invaluable uh, in terms of adding uh, value to client portfolios and also to the extent that we've avoided um, a lot of uh, disasters in markets. And I mean, I can give you a few examples. African Bank uh, would be a good example where we saw what played out with African Bank take place with Profern um, in the early 2000s. And there are many examples where the market cycles that we see today really are just repetitions of what we've seen in history. And that experience that we think we have in our business um, is certainly one of our big competitive advantages and we think invaluable um, when we look at you know, some of the experience levels of uh, various competitors. So that would be the one um, defining factor from a truffle perspective. The other defining factor would be size. So because we are a, a small to medium sized business, uh, we have a bigger opportunity set in terms of the number of stocks that are available to us in our investment universe. And that's just really a function of our assets under management. So typically a big asset manager with anything in excess of 100 billion has a much more limited opportunity set. They, they, the ability for them to deploy capital into stocks outside the top 40 and make a difference to their performance is very limited. So for smaller managers, People with, with below uh, 100 billion of assets under management, the ability to identify and exploit mispriced opportunities outside the top 40 opportunity set is significantly bigger. And at the end of the day, that just means that the ability to add alpha is greater because you have more stocks to potentially include in your portfolio which are mispriced as opposed to focusing on a very small, limited subset of opportunities where sometimes you are forced to take bigger positions in a smaller opportunity set as opposed to spreading your capital. So size 
absolutely we would say is a defining advantage, another defining advantage from a truffle perspective. I think the last differentiating factor certainly from um, our perspective would be our focus on limiting downside. We run a, a scenario analysis when we're looking at the underlying valuations of our various securities, which we like to call the what if we're wrong analysis. And just to sort of take a step back and maybe explain that to you, what we try and do is we build an investment case for each and every security that we analyze, whether it's a property stock, whether it's an equity, we try and build up to a valuation which we believe is the underlying worth of that business. The intrinsic value uh, is, a, is a generically or commonly used term. Now, asset managers like Truffle, and certainly from our perspective, we have skill, but it's not perfect skill. So because we don't have perfect skill, it means that even if you're a top quartile manager, you're gonna be getting 30 to 40% of your calls wrong uh, over time. So what we do is we look at each and every one of our underlying investment cases and we ask ourselves the question what if we're wrong with this analysis in other words we've, we've given it our best crack in terms of what we think the business is worth we've gone through a detailed and rigorous process to identify what the valuation opportunity or the value of the stock is but what happens if we're wrong what is the downside to being wrong and exposing capital to a particular idea and when we run that analysis, what becomes evident is what is the potential for capital loss. So in other words, if we are wrong with our earnings estimates of the business or the ratings estimates of the business, what does that downside potential look like? And in essence, what we're trying to do is we're trying to distill our opportunity set to those ideas which have a return distribution which are skewed to the upside. In other words, where there's a bigger chance of making money, even in the event of us being slightly wrong with some of our assumptions. We would rather be able to get out with the capital that we've put in, in the event that we're wrong, as opposed to being wrong and you write off 60-70% of your capital. So one of the advantages that we think we have is built into our process and is really a process of self-reflection of our investment cases of the underlying securities and questioning what that downside looks like in the event that we're wrong. And we know that many asset managers will get calls wrong over time because you don't get all your calls right. So we think that that's a, certainly a competitive advantage and it really focuses our minds in terms of putting the capital to work in opportunities where there is this margin of safety or where there's a significant discount to what the stock is worth. And then secondly, stress testing that and saying, if we're wrong, what is the chance of losing significant principle? And if there is a chance of losing significant principle based on that analysis, we're not gonna be allocating capital to those opportunities. We're really gonna be looking for those opportunities where that distribution upside you know, is, uh, is obviously skewed to the right hand side. So, so we think a significant advantage from a process point of view um, uh, in terms of our what if we're wrong scenario or limiting downside analysis.